All right. Um, we're in uh, we're in week thirteen. We're talking about six point four compound inequalities, and I highlighted for you at the very top compound inequalities. What is this? Anybody in here have any idea or any recollection or a guess as to what a compound inequality is? Yeah, Aaron, what do you think? Isn't it like two inequalities? Yes, he says there's two inequalities put together to make one. That's exactly right. Two inequalities put together to make one. So that's where we're going to go today. And we're going to start off, I want to start off by doing just like a little um, a little sort of a guessing game here. Okay, I'm going to give you, we're going to do two examples. Here's the first box, two examples today. I'm gonna read you a uh, I'm gonna read you a sentence that's in the red here, and I want you to identify a couple of things. So here's the first one. Let's try and identify all numbers that are greater than or equal to negative two, and less than positive two. I'll read it again. All numbers greater than or equal to negative two and less than two. I want you to give me a number that makes this statement true a number that makes this statement false, and we're going to graph it together. So give me a number that you think is true, that makes that true. Give me a number you think is false, and then we're going to graph it together. All right. Who thinks they have a number that is greater than or equal to negative 2, but less than positive 2? Uh, Sergio, give me yours. Negative 1. He says negative 1. Is that right? Yes. Does that make it true? Yes. Negative 1, I agree. Give me another one. Yes, sir. Negative two. Give me another one. Zero. Zero. Good. Give me another one. 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 Give me another one. Uh, two. Does that make that true? No. no not two. Not two. Give me another one. Negative one point five. Negative one point five. Good. All of those are between negative two and two. You guys agree with that? Okay. Give me a number that makes it false. So what are your false numbers? Yes, sir. Two. That's a good one. Give me another one. Seven. Yes. Three. Give me another one. One hundred and fifty-six or one hundred and five. Yeah. All of those, right? They make it false. So let's think about the graph for a second then. We know that these numbers make it true, but these numbers and others make it false. So how would the graph look? Well, if I drew a number line here, there's my number line. And I put 0 on my number line because that's a point I need to talk about. That's 0 there. Where is negative 2? To the left or to the right is 0? Left. Left. Very good. Here's negative 2. Where's positive 2? To the right. All right. And then... I have to have two dots here. Do I circle, do I, do I color in my dot for negative two? Yes. Yes, how do you know? Because it can be equal to negative two, right? After all, negative two is one of the ones that does make the statement true. Okay, what about two? Can I close the dot there? No, I cannot. And I want all the ones that are in between there, right? Because zero is in between, one is in between, one, negative 1 1.5, those are all in between. So these are the ones that I want. And notice all the ones that make this false are outside of that range. You guys see that? Yeah. They're outside of that range, okay? This makes sense so far? Yeah. Is it kind of fun? Yeah. All right, good. Let's do it again. I want you guys to think of a number. Give me a number that is either less than or equal to 3 or greater than or equal to 6. I want you to give me one number that makes it true and less than or equal to 3 or greater than 6. All right, Philberto, we're going to start with you, buddy. Uh, what makes this number uh, 9? Does 9 make that true, everybody? Yeah. 9 satisfies one of them, right? Give me another number that makes it true. Sam. One more. Sam. Uh, 3. Does 3 make it true? Yeah. Yes. Give me another that makes it true. Phil Barto. Uh, four. 4. Does 4 make this statement true? Yeah. 4 does not make this statement true. 4 goes over here in the false category. Uh, Anna, give me another true one. 300. Yep, I would definitely say. Oh, sorry, 200. Sorry. Okay. Um, eight. Eight will make it true, yes. Okay, give me some false numbers. Junior, give me a false number. Five, Junior. It says five. Give me another false number. Six. Does that make it false? 3.5 pi. Ooh. Oh, very good. All right. All right, let's take a look at this graph now. Okay, here's my graph. Let's see here. I have to put zero on the graph, so let's put zero here. Okay. Let's put uh, three here, and let's put uh, six there. So far, so good. All right. So far, so good. Now, at the point uh, three, do I open? I leave my dot open, or do I color it in? Why do I close it? 
because it says less than or equal to. And I want all numbers that are less than that, so that would be this direction, wouldn't it? These are all the numbers that are less than 3, although nobody gave me one except this one. Did anyone have like negative 5 on there? Yes. That would also give it to you, right? Okay. Let's take a look at 6 now. What about a, a circle at 6? Do I close that circle in or keep it open? Open. I keep it open. Very good. And I go to the right because I want numbers that are greater than that. And check it out. All of these numbers, like 300, 8, 9, all of those are definitely greater than 6, correct? So this illustrates a very important concept. You see this type of graph here? I'm circling in green. And then this type of graph over here? These graphs are tied to certain words. This graph up at the top is what we call an AND statement. It connects, it makes a line segment. It's a number that is smaller than something but bigger than something else. This one is an OR statement. It tells you that it, either one of those two things need to be true, right? It could either be less than three or it can be greater than six, but it can't be it can't be both, right? There's no number out there that is less than 3 and greater than 6, right? I can't think of one. They don't exist. So the way that we remember these is that an and statement is a line segment, but the or statement, you guys ever seen like ors on a boat? So like if this was a boat, if this is a boat, like on water, there are like ors that stick out from either side. It kind of looks like that. Like if this is the boat right here. Look at the ors that stick out, right? It's kind of a long stretch, but you can kind of guess that I guess that I guess. So that's the difference between and versus or statements, and that's what we're going to do today. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, we're going we're to talk about the differences. Okay, here's the first one we're going to do. Remember, I have four boxes with you. Here's the second one. We're going to solve and graph this compound inequality. This is a compound inequality because there are two or more inequalities set together. This is a compound inequality. All right, here we go. We're going to begin. Do you think this is going to be an and statement or an or statement? Okay, well, l let's see what happens here, right? I want you to consider this. I want you to consider that there are, these are, there are three columns here, okay? There's a left column over here. There's a middle column, and then there's a right column. I want you to think of working vertically, left, center, and right, all right? Now, here is the variable right here. The variable is x. You guys agree with that? Great. What are we doing to x? We are multiplying x by 3. Then we're subtracting how much? Three. Good. So we're going we're gonna to reverse engineer this, and we're trying to figure out numbers that make this statement true. Are there some numbers that are between 15 and 24? Yes. There are, right? But we have to make sure that they also satisfy the stuff in the middle. So first things first, we're going to add three to all three of my columns, my left, my middle, and my right. Okay, here's what that does for us. How much is 15 and 3? 18. It's now less than 3x less than how much is 24 and 3? 27. Very good. Okay, now, considering the variable, I'm taking 3 and I'm multiplying it by x. What's the inverse of multiplication? Division. So I'm going to divide by 3 in all three columns. Everybody understand so far? Makes sense, right? Positive 3, that's a positive 3, right? So 6 is now less than x, which is less than, what, 27 divided 3? 9. 9, all right. So here's what we have. Can someone give me some numbers that are in between 6 and 9? 7, good, give me another one. 8, and then what? 8.5. 8 8.5, wow, awesome, good. Okay, let's check, make sure some of these are true. I'm going to take an easy number like 7, and I'm going to substitute it back in to make sure I did this correct. So let's do this with me. What's 7 times 3? 21. What's 21 minus 3? 18, right? Is 18 between 15 and 24? So we did it right. How about 8? If I check 8, what's 3 times 8? 24 minus 3 is how much? 21. Is that between 15 and 24? It sure is. Hey, give me a number that's not between 6 and 9. An easy number. An easy number. How about zero? That's an easy number, right? Okay, let's see here. What's three times zero? What's zero minus three? Negative three. Is 15 in between, or sorry, is negative three in between 15 and 24? No, it sure isn't. So, we seem to have solved it here. Now we're going to graph our solution set. 
Here's zero. There's six. There's nine. Kind of like funky spacing here. So I want everything that's in between here. Do I color in the six or the nine? No, I do not. Why do I not? Because it's not equal to. Good. Is this an and statement or an or statement? Or, Sergio. It's an, it's an and statement or or statement, Sergio. Or. No. This is an and statement. All right, thank you for your guess. Remember, we're going to approach this problem the same way. We're going to consider that there's our three columns here. There's a left, a middle, and a right. We're going to identify the variable. The variable in this case is x. Yes, very good. We're going to subtract 1 from all three of our locations here, right? So that's going to give me, how much is 15 take away 1? 14. 14, less than negative 7x, less than or equal to 49. So far, so good? Yeah. All right, now, here's the variable. What's the inverse of multiplying by negative 7? Divided by what? All right, so that gives me 14 divided by negative 7. How much is that? Negative 2. Oh, thank you. I was waiting for someone to see it. Why do I have to switch the direction of the inequality? Thank you very much. Greater than or equal to, what's 49 divided by negative 7? Negative 7. Good. Great. All right? I want you to look at this right now. And I want you to, I wonder if anybody in this room is bothered by the way that that looks. Is anybody in this room bothered? by the way that that looks, that says negative 2 is greater than x, which is greater than or equal to negative 7. Is anybody sort of bothered by that? Or are you guys cool with it? It's all good? All right, well, it, it is all good. This is definitely a true statement. You cannot argue with this. this is, there are some numbers that are bigger than negative 2, and those numbers are also, you know, uh, bigger than negative 7, right? Okay, so... The only problem that I have with this is, is this. Let me, let me break this off for you. We all agree that 3 is greater than 1. Is that true or false? True. That's true. No one in this world is going to argue that one, right? 3 is bigger than 1. Is it also true that 1 is less than 3? This is also true. So we have two different ways of saying the exact same thing. And this is confusing for some students. Why is this one more logical well I would guess more logical in a certain aspect anybody have any thoughts with respect to the number line the lower yeah very good right when you look at a number line here's zero there's one and then there's three it's in the same spot right one is on the left side of the three one's on the left side of the three so in this case when you look at the number line okay if I'm gonna graph this when you look at the number line here's zero here's negative two there's negative 7. Notice how they're reversed when you read them from left to right. Do you guys see that? So even though this is a true statement over here, I'm going to write the equivalent for this one. And that's going to be this. Negative 7 is now less than or equal to x, less than negative 2. I reversed the direction of the inequality signs the same way I reversed this one. Not because I'm multiplying or dividing by negative, but because I want it to line up the same way on the number line. Does this make sense to you? So I would highly encourage you to write your answers in less than form to make it match the number line. Not to say that either one of those are wrong because they're both true statements, just like these are both true statements. But I would argue the one at the bottom makes a little bit more sense in terms of the number line. So there we go. At negative 7, I'm going to have a circle. At negative 2, I'm going to have a circle. Which one do I color in? That's very good. And I want numbers that are in between here. So what type of a statement is this? This is an and. You guys ready to go? All right, here we go. We have two inequality statements. They're joined by the word or, so that's going to give it away in terms of what we're supposed to be working for at the end. Now, I have 5x minus, or sorry, plus 6 is less than or equal to negative 9. What's a good way to start this first problem here? We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. I agree. Nice job. So we're going to say 5x is now less than or equal to negative 15. And we're going to divide by what? Do I change the direction of the inequality sign? No, I don't. Why not? 
There we go. X is less than or equal to negative 3. All right. So we're going to add 8 to both sides. We're going to add 8. That means uh, 2X is going to be greater than how much? 20. Good. Divide by what? Divide by 2. Very good. You guys are on top of it. You guys know what's up. So X must be greater than how much? Do I change the direction of the inequality sign? No. no. Are there numbers out there that exist that are less than negative 3 or bigger than 10? Yes. Yeah, there's sure. There's lots of them, right? 15, that will work. Negative 80, that will work. So in terms of graphing this one, here's my number line. Here is 0. Here is 10. And here is negative 3. You guys agree with that? Okay, I'm going to put a circle at negative 3 and a circle at 10. Which one do I color in? Yeah, I sure do, right? And I go to the left because it does say less than. So I want all these numbers. All of those numbers are less than negative 3. Or the other solution to my compound inequality could be numbers that are just strictly greater than 10, like all of these, 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on and so forth. But what area does not work? Yeah, all of this area does not work, right? None of those will work. Very good. If I plugged in zero to any, both of these,